Howdy, YouTube viewers and Gear Gadget fans everywhere. Thank you for tuning into the Watchbox review. Got another review here for you, so let's just dive right into it. This time around, we're taking a close look at the Seiko 55 Fathoms Michael Lively custom build uh, that basically started off as a Seiko SNZH 59 water sport watch. So that's a that's a lot of words and a lot of meaning into one sentence here, but basically this watch it was built by Michael Lively, a member of the Watch You Seek forum, and um, he does a lot of custom dial work and custom watch work. I don't know if he does uh, regular repairs or regular custom mods. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time when he put this particular watch up for sale uh, on the Watch You Seek forum. So it's been a great watch. I love this watch. Despite being my smallest, one of my most conservative looking watches, it regularly gets regular wrist time in my collection. So um, you're seeing the watch here on my 62 millimeter wide wrist. I have lost about 25 or 30 pounds since the last video I've done, so my wrists have gotten a little bit smaller, but I'm, I'm still about a 62 millimeter wide in that regard. So let's take the watch off and hammer out some of the technical specifications. So the overall lug end, to lug end length is 48 millimeters. The bezel diameter is a 42 millimeter diameter bezel. The overall width of the case including the crown is 45 millimeters across. And the strap lug is a standard uh, 22 millimeter wide strap lug width. So the spring bar that came from Seiko is, is a standard typical type spring bar. It's not the Seiko fat heavy duty spring bars. So in other words, it's very easy to replace the strap on this watch with anything 22 millimeters wide that accepts a typical standard generic uh, spring bar design. The overall case thickness from the crest of the slightly domed mineral crystal to the flat of the case back is 14 millimeters thick. And the crown is a six millimeter diameter crown. So that crown is a simple push-pull design. And I generally prefer screw down crowns, so I really don't consider this watch to be a dive watch, even though it's kind of dressed up to look like one. It, it still technically really isn't. Um, but it's still 10 ATMs water case pressure resistant. I've taken it swimming in and out of the Pacific Ocean. Fine, no problems. You just got to be careful with the crown. You don't want to pull the crown, and you definitely don't want to be turning it and twisting the crown while it's in the case. So as long as you follow those, those rough guidelines, you should be okay using this watch actively in the water. So let's take a look at... The uh, case back, you see there a standard type uh, large window exhibition style case back that you can find on a lot of different Seikos. Um, it has the name and model number kind of around the perimeter there and uh, it's a screw in type of design and again together with the crown it provides 10 ATMs of water case pressure resistance. So the movement used in this, in this particular watch is a Seiko 7S36 automatic movement. I'm not going to go into too much details about it, but it is a bi-directional winding rotor. So any movement or rotation of that rotor will wind the mainspring. Uh, you cannot manually wind this movement at the crown. Um, it is a, I believe it's about a 21,500 uh, beat um, balance wheel. And hopefully my camera will capture that, but that's basically what it is. And you can see that on the motion of the sweep second hand on the front of the dial. Um, and it's got about a 32 to 33 hour power reserve capacity on this. So I wear this watch semi-actively all the time and I never have any problems keeping the mainspring wound and it's really, really good in that regard. Um, I don't like shake my arm or do anything crazy just to keep it wound. It simply stays wound uh, sufficiently just wearing the watch. So you're seeing the watch here on a Time Factors ladder strap. Time Factors is a watch accessory retailer, uh, I think based in the UK. So um, I really like this ladder strap style. It, it breathes wonderfully. It doesn't trap a lot of water and moisture or anything like that. It's a great active water sport uh, rubber type strap and it's really comfortable. So it's got a big tang buckle on the other side. Uh, 22, I believe 22 millimeters across and two keepers. And it's a great, great tandem, a great combo. So those of you who also have Seiko 55 Fathoms, I really think you should look into a ladder strap um, for it very comfortable. Um, obviously it's styled heavily after the isoframes, but at about $25 it's a fraction of the price. So I guess you got to weigh, weigh all that. The, the isoframes I think are a little bit nicer, a little bit thicker, a little more robust, but uh, for the price it's hard to beat this time factor strap. Um, the watch did come 
as Michael sent it to me. The watch did come with the OEM bracelet. And I don't, don't know if my camera will pick it up here, but this entire bracelet and the watch case is a really, really dark brown color. Like dark, dark espresso brown. And indoors or in dimmer lighting conditions, it actually looks black. But when you take the watch out into the sunlight, it's got a really, really dark espresso or dark chocolate type look to it. Awesome, awesome. It looks really, really great. Um, I don't like brown watches. If this watch were brown, I wouldn't wear it. The fact that it's closer to black than it is brown, I think that uh, says a lot, and it just looks really, really good. Um, the bracelet is a typical Seiko fold-over, uh, dual push-button type of clasp with a fold-over lock over the front, over the back, I guess, with the Seiko logo etched into it. And I actually prefer it with the rubber water sport strap, but that's just my personal preference. Um, I wore this watch all summer when it's hot and muggy, and I had no problems with the overall comfort level of this watch. The watch itself is not very heavy, and it's very small, so I can wear it a little bit looser around the wrist, and it still breathes nicely without suffocating my wrist. Okay, so it does use a unidirectional rotating dive bezel, and one of the most unique features about the watch overall is this hard... Uh, polycarbonate, I believe, plastic uh, bezel insert where you see all the graphics around the perimeter there. I don't believe this is a, it's, it's definitely not like a hardened crystal or anything like that. It's definitely a plastic, a polycarbonate type plastic. So you're going to want to be kind of careful. Um, it's not going to have the same scratch resistance as a Seiko uh, crystal. Um, opening on the front so just be careful with that bezel and you should be all right it's got a nicely semi what I call a semi coin edge bezel uh, trim around that and it's really nice it grips easily um, there was one time I smacked the watch really hard on the roof of my minivan and uh, when I was loading and unloading cargo and I popped the whole bezel off and the whole thing just basically came and snapped in my hand and like I kind of freaked out but to Seiko's credit, it, it's a really nice bezel design, and it's really, really simple. I was just able to press it back down and snap it back into place. I have, haven't had any problems with that, uh, but it is something I'm careful with. Um, very, very typical for Seiko divers. It's got, a, I believe, a silicone O-ring gasket underneath the dive bezel. I, I wish I took pictures of the watch while I had it apart, while I had the bezel apart, but it uses a silicone-type O-ring gasket in there, so it really absorbs any slop or loose fit mechanics inside there and so it's a really smooth solid feeling uh, mechanical design one of my favorites overall okay so let's take a closer look into the dial here and what you're looking at there let me let me turn around and make sure I'm in frame okay there we go what you're looking at there is um, the Michael Lively custom dial and you're seeing the no radiation logo that uh, Blanc Pan uh, commonly used in like the late mid to late 50s I believe and um, that comes from the origins of glow of glow-in-the-dark luminescent paint so go back way way back in the history of horology and watchmakers that used glow-in-the-dark luminescent paints were actually emitting radioactive particles and so the poor people that they had in the assembly worker areas putting these watches together were basically exposed to radioactive contaminant material. And so I believe Blankpan, don't quote me on this, I believe Blankpan was one of the first companies to use non-radioactive uh, glow-in-the-dark luminescent pigments in their paints. And so they proudly displayed the no radiation logo on their watches. Of course, fast forward to today, glow-in-the-dark glow toys, glow-in-the-dark paints, glow-in-the-dark everything is such a common thing that we don't really think about it. But fast forward to today and the overall style and the overall homage uh, have carried over into this particular design. So my thumbs up to go up to Michael Lively for that. I think it's really, really cool. And it just gives my watch, it gives the watch an overall different appearance, something different, something unique about it. So um, this 7S36 started out its life, again, as a Seiko SNZH59. And here's the watch, as you see on the Creation Watches website. And most of the Seiko 55 Fathoms builders use the OEM Seiko broadsword hands. And I guess it's kind of cool if you want a pure homage to the original design. But I like how the, I like how Michael Lively used uh, a Seiko Monster hands. I'm a big fan of the Seiko Monster, and it's it's a great watch. Um, and I wanted to, if I were to build a 55 Fathoms, I actually would want Seiko Monster Hands to be on my particular custom build. And 
I guess I was in the right place at the right time when this watch was put up for sale and it had all the key elements I'm looking for. So uh, this watch has been simplified in that the day date complication has been covered up with the solid dial, as you can see that there. So there actually is a functioning day date, I believe, complication underneath this dial, but the fact that uh, it's covered up with the solid dial. So that also, again, goes back to the original stylings of the original watches and it's something that I was all it's also something I was looking for so I have lots of day lots of watches with day date complications and date complications already I want to try something different a little more vintage a little more plain vanilla a little more simplified looking so um, there you have it uh, that's pretty much it um, I want to just uh, take a moment here to thank you guys for tuning in to this watch box review video I'm going to be loading up some more videos in the very near future. I've got a lot of watches that I've acquired over the past year. So adios and sayonara, everyone.